so crabs do not invade. Then make sure that your kit is always clean and trousers creased and neat like. Your bed pack done with blanket six and the bottom sheet pulled tight. Next to the parade ground to learn our left from right, the corporal had us marching from dawn until the night. He said, you're a shower. You're daft and most unsightly. I didn't mind him shouting, but do it more politely. The sergeant, he was even worse in his language, most impressive. But I don't think he went to Oxford. He was far too, too impressive. He thought that when we were born, the wrong part was thrown away. The fact that we could not march filled him with such dismay. Then we went to fire a rifle. Things got from bad to worse. The thing just bucked and kicked and made the corporal curse. Hold it tight, loop down the sight, and pull the trigger slowly. Said in such a way that it sounded padre-like and holy. We were introduced to an officer when the billet he inspected picked up a carpet at the door and said, this thing's infected. The floor, it was not clean enough and the boots had not been polished. In the place, it was a shambles, all privileges abolished. The cookhouse was the centre of our gourmet eating place. Urban Rowley dug the mess, a really big disgrace. They served bully beef for sure, and kind of rubber eggs, and put a lot of pots of coloured liquid that was made from coffee drinks. So the, to the naffy we did go, to drown ourselves <coughs> with drink. Cups of char and nappy wads, they put us in the pink. But sadly, they did not work, for as you all can tell, the next day brought the dawning of another day of hell. Whilst we were there, we had a medical, it really was a hoot. The MO looked us over, but was pickled as a newt. If you had a pulse and, st and stood still, you were guaranteed a one and then a large dose of laxative to see if you could run. <laughs> we endured this for six long weeks and started getting better and learned to obey orders right down to the last letter. They organised a big parade so that we could all pass out and invited friends and family so there could be no doubt the cream of England's menfolk were on parade that day and compli complicated marking, marching drills ensured we earned our prey. Chests out with pride, we shouldered arms and marched in time to band. National service soldiers, the finest in the land. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Poetry didn't really occupy much of my time during this period. I travelled quite a bit, worked at quite a lot of <coughs> RAF hospitals. And, and when I came out of the Air Force, I went to the Cheetah Royal as a student psychiatric nurse. I qualified after three, work, three uh, years and as, a quali as uh, I qualified as a psychiatric nurse. I went to psychiatric nursing in a fit of pink, really, because Willington Hospital wouldn't recognise my forces training. So I thought, well, blow it. If I can't do SRN, I'll do that. But I did actually have to do some of my training at Willington. And it was there I met my first my wife, and I was married at St Margaret's. I left Burnage to live in a staff house in the grounds of Cheever Royal at Heal Green, and I continued my professional training uh, I qualified as a, a registered mental nurse and I actually moved from there to Bolton. And, but I did some postgraduate training at Bolton and I qualified as a state registered nurse. When I went to Bolton, now Bolton is a very strange place and it's got, the, the accent's a bit weird, you know. And of course being from Burnage, I didn't really understand uh, what, what coming from Belgium was like. And there was, a, there was a little place on the edge of town I had to have, actually, an interpreter when I first went to work.